Just one or two more minutes to give people the possibility to connect. Hello, Anton. Just saw your message. Good morning. Okay, so let's uh, just slowly begin. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for joining the webinar today. Um, my name is uh, Jeanette Bolter, and uh, I am the coordinator of the Entrance Project. Um, the intention of the webinar this morning is to have a presentation from the EIB uh, in regards to the funding mechanisms for providers of solutions, sustainable transport and mobility solutions to boost their uh, European uptake. So uh, what we will be doing today uh, is I will briefly be giving you an introduction and the presentation of the entrance project and uh, what will be the upcoming entrance matchmaking platform, which we will be using uh, or launching in September and it will be a platform that the solution providers of Europe, uh, solution providers to obtain sustainable transport and mobility sector will be able to use in order to um, do matchmaking with potential buyers or with potential investors or with the final intention of supporting you in uh, the uptake and um, scale up of your sustainable uh, and innovative solutions. Uh, once I have done the presentation of the project, I will leave the word to EIB, in this case to Juliet and Othman, uh, in order to do a presentation of the EIB funding mechanisms. And also they will be giving you a couple of examples of how uh, the deployment of projects uh, that scale up the innovative transport solutions have been supported previously by EIB. And finally, we will be having a round of questions and answers and the discussion on the specific financing that EIB uh, can uh, offer, including also the future mobility facility. I do inform you already that for dissemination purposes, this webinar will be recorded. Um, you will not be able to speak, uh, nor we will be able to see you, but all questions, please don't hesitate to put them directly into the chat. And then we will make sure to answer them uh, throughout the webinar, maybe especially during the question and answer round. So uh, I will just directly go to it. One second. There we go. So the presenters of today, besides from myself, uh, so I'm Jeanette Bolter. I'm a senior innovation consultant at p and Consultants. More specifically, I am based in Spain. Um, and then we have also Juliette Dormadou, uh, who is an innovation finance advisory. 
So uh, she is working for the um, European Investment Bank, uh, and she will be presenting today the financial opportunities in collaboration with Osman Gilmas, who is specifically working with the transport sector and more specifically with air, maritime and innovative transport and the mobility division. So looking into very briefly a presentation of the entrance matchmaking platform and the entrance project, just to inform you that this is a project that has been financed by the European Commission under Horizon 2020. You can see there the specific topic that we presented this to. This is a coordination and support actions where we have received uh, 1.5 million euros uh, in order to set up both the matchmaking platform as well as offline complementary services um, during the next 36 months. So we kicked off the project on the 1st of January 2021, and we will be continuing the activities until the end of 2023. And it is very important also to mention that the intention is that although the project does end in 2023, our intention is to keep um supporting the platform and keeping it alive also after the project ends so we um we of course recommend that you enter this um the consortium that we are collaborating with we are 15 partners uh, where you can see from here that we have representatives from the different transport sectors in europe so we do cover in the project uh, all of the transport modes uh, going from air, maritime, uh, rail, road to urban mobility also. Um, we have a couple of technology providers who are in charge of building up the platform. And we also have a representative from the European Enterprise Network through Itainova. And besides from that, uh, we also have a couple of consultancy firms, one being ourselves and uh, Ilda, who is in charge of all of the dissemination activities. The challenge of the entrance project is based on the urgency of really implementing more effective innovative measures uh, in order to create a cleaner and more sustainable mobility area. In that aspect, it is uh, quite a challenge for many first of a kind and innovative solutions to really get visibility and uh, to get the approval of uh, the industrial players that can finally do the uptake of their solutions and uh, to have these companies really try out innovative solution because there is, of course, for them quite uh, a, um, a relevant risk in testing out new types of solutions. So in that sense, uh, many innovative solutions are facing a very harsh competition with the traditional and existing solutions. On the other hand, accessing financing opportunities is quite a huge bottleneck also for these innovative solutions. Um, meaning that the companies really struggle to raise the sufficient funding in order to reach the market. Um, and this means that Europe is really losing out uh, on their competitive advantage uh, if you compare it to the United States and also very big parts of Asia. On the other hand, and, uh, and also lastly, there is a very high need for lowering the risk in acquisition of innovative solutions, where it is very important to take into, into consideration the possibility of purchase aggregation and collateral service contracts, uh, where insurance can really support the uh, users of the innovative solutions in order to overcome the technologies that are connected uh, to the embedding innovations. Second, the objective of insurance is, as I have mentioned, the creation of an innovative European online matchmaking platform where solution providers, potential buyers and also investors can register themselves and the system will automatically be matching uh, the 
different actors, the st different stakeholders that have similar interests, meaning that this will provide the opportunity for the solution providers to automatically get connected with potential buyers or with potential investors that have a specific interest in their solution. All of this is done also in, with the support of complementary offline services that I will describe to you uh, in just a minute. And with all of this, the final objective is to upscale the first of a kind sustainable transport and mobility solutions by thereby reducing the European CO2 emissions and pollutants caused by the transport and mobility sector. <clears throat> The way that the project has been structured is that we look into the supply, demand and finance triangle. Supply meaning all types of organizations that provide the first of a kind transport mobility solutions. The demand meaning the potential buyers and the finance can either be public or private investors, but it can also mean uh, European funding opportunities such as the European Innovation Council, the Connecting Europe facility, and of course also uh, very relevant to the webinar today, the European Investment Bank. The way that we do this, we do it through five concept pillars. Uh, one is to identify and engage all types of stakeholders directly from the demand, supply and finance. We will be matching these solution providers, buyers and finance opportunities, thereby also providing access to finance and facilitating purchase aggregation and de-risk the market uptake. And finally, we have a high focus also on cross-fertilization with other European initiatives and other European associations and organizations that are working within the transport and mobility sector. We do this um, through four concept facilitators. One, uh, very related also to what we're doing today, are training and brokerage events. We will also uh, offer an entrance secretariat, uh, which is actually being managed by me together with my colleague Edgar, where we can provide you with support and with advice on how to access public finance um, opportunities. And we will also be providing, as mentioned, uh, a specific partner will be providing a neutral trustee for the potential buyers in order to promote the purchase aggregation and to orchestrate it in a neutral manner. And finally, we'll also be providing innovation finance support services to specific startup SMEs uh, and solution providers um, that will actually be selected through our brokerage events that we will be celebrating throughout the next three years. The first brokerage event will take place in November this year, so we will make sure that you receive more information about this event. Um, it will be online, uh, so we will still not be organizing face-to-face -face events, uh, but we hope that it would be possible to do this for next year. Um, as you can see, the way that we do this is through matchmaking accelerator funnel workflow, which uh, sounds very complicated, but it's actually quite straightforward. As mentioned, we attract um, all of the stakeholders, we engage them through all of our activities and support them in really connecting and doing a very specific and interest-based uh, matchmaking. Thereafter, we promote the specific collaboration all thereby hoping that it will end up in a final market uh, uptake. The impact, of course, will be uh, to increase the European uptake of these innovative solutions within the transport mobility sector, thereby having a, a high CO2 emission reduction in Europe and actually in that way contributing very significantly to the sustainability goals of Europe for 2030 and 2050. So that is just my uh, very quick introduction. Um, you have here the link in order to enter what is currently the website. There you can already do a pre-registration uh, for the platform that we will launch in September. Otherwise, you will be receiving information about the launching of this platform so you can register once it's actually launched. And at this point, I will be leaving the word to Juliet.
Hi, thanks, Juliet. Hopefully everybody can hear me and see me fine. Um, I'm Juliet Damadu from the Innovation Finance Advisory team here at the EIB, um, together with my colleague Ozan Yilmaz from the technical side of the, the bank. We'll be here to discuss um, what EIB is and does, um, our aims and interests uh, with regards to sustainable transport mobility, uh, what the bank can offer with regards to funding, and also um, hopefully provide you with some examples of projects that we currently have or we're currently working on or have worked on. Um, we hope to leave time at the end for some questions um, that you may have uh, and for clarity purposes. Um, but essentially, ultimately, we hope that you leave the webinar with a good sense of what is available for you in terms of funding your projects um, from the EIB. All right, with that, uh, can you see the slides? Is that okay? Yes, okay. All right, yes. so first of all, let's start with a little overview of who we are. So we're the European Investment Bank and also known as the EIB. Uh, now more commonly referred to as the EU Climate Bank. Uh, the bank is essentially the investment banking and lending arm of the European Union, and it's the largest multilateral lender in the world, in the world and also the largest multilateral borrower. Uh, our peers include the IFC, which is the lending arm of the World Bank, uh, and also Asian and African development banks alike. The group itself um, is governed by the European Union member states and as such we have a, a close relationship with the member states and also the European Commission. Um, but having said that and you know, despite the EIB essentially being a public body, um, we are financially autonomous and raise our own money on the open markets and largely done so through bond issues. Um, the EIB group itself consists of we, the EIB, and our sister fund, the European Investment Fund. Um, and with our strong AAA credit rating, this enables us to raise capital at favourable rates, which in turn we can pass on to clients as much as possible. And we use the money that we do raise to invest in just about every geography and across most sectors. But our priority areas for investments are climate, infrastructure, innovation and skills, small businesses um, and such. And, and in addition, EIB lending focuses on the social and economic uh, cohesion within the EU itself and more a developmental angle outside of the EU. So uh, our headquarters are here in Luxembourg, uh, raining today, but hopefully the sun is shining on sustainable finance and transport as always. Um, we have around 300, oh, three, sorry, 3,000 staff. Um, of which not only finance professionals, um, we have uh, engineers such as Ozan, um, sector economists and socio-environmental experts as well within our, within our base. Of course, more information is available on our website, www.eib.org. Now, uh, as the Climate Bank, we're no strangers to climate action or sustainability. Um, and although these topics have become more mainstream in recent times, it's actually been something that's been important to EIB for many years. For example, back in 2007, um, EIB pioneered the first green bond. And we issued the world's first climate awareness bond, which exclusively allocated funding to climate change mitigating activities. Um, then in 2018, we launched our first sustainability awareness bond, which allowed us to extend our green approach uh, to other environmental and social policy objectives such as gender awareness or digitalization, etc. Uh, the EIB remains the world's leading supranational issue of green and sustainability bonds. And um, since inception of these, we've raised over 38 billion euros across 17 different currencies. And taking stock of what we've actually done in terms of projects themselves, uh, since 2012, we've provided 197 billion euros of finance to projects that protect the environment, uh, essentially aiming to reduce emissions and help countries adapt to the impacts of climate change. Even last year, despite 
the global coronavirus pandemic taking up focus of the world, EIB still managed to deploy 24.2 billion euros to fight climate change. And this is uh, this was around 40% of our funding. Now, despite these achievements, we're far from finished. Um, one of our climate objectives is that by 2025, we aim to increase the share of our financing dedicated to climate action and environmental sustainability to at least 50%. So also in, in, on top of that, we hope that by 2030, our lending to such projects should increase to 1 trillion euros. Now that you have an idea of our green credentials, let's say, let's move on to why we are all here today, the topic of transportation and mobility from the sustainability angle. Now, uh, in terms of transport, it's the largest single sector of EIB activity and accounts for around 23% of our group lending activity. And we believe that the new mobility business models and technologies play a crucial role in enabling the transformation of transport towards zero emission standards. And that's why the bank's focus has, has essentially broadened from focusing previously on larger infrastructure projects, but now to more actively supporting smaller innovative ones that are pushing the envelope. And as such, our group aim is to promote research, development and innovation in cutting edge technologies such as alternative fuels, uh, e-mobility, uh, autonomous driving and AI, for example. But fundamentally, we aim to accelerate the uptake of sustainable transport whilst also attracting investment from the private sector. Often there's talk about EIB, um, you know, sort of pushing out the private sector because our fees are so low, but actually that's not our aim at all. We try to keep projects costs as low as possible for the promoter, but crowd in private sector investment to ensure balanced regional development all at the same time. Now, in line with our corporate uh, climate and sustainability objectives, the two things that we do consider when investing in transport are firstly that the transportation will be cleaner, uh, that it'll be greener and, and will be safer and add benefit um, to Europeans' lives. And secondly, we also like to consider that it will strengthen the connectivity across Europe and beyond. <clears throat> so. Scalability is, is a, a strong angle that we're interested in there. Now, in addition to our financing, we provide technical assistance and advisory support. And we'll touch on those points in a few slides later on. Um, but for the time being, let's focus on what EIB provides in terms of financing. Now, there we go. as an organization, we see that uh, private investors are hesitant to invest in green mobility solutions, and, and mainly because most urban transport systems don't cover their operating and maintenance costs or let alone capital expenses. And another issue is often we find that upgrading to environmentally friendly vehicles or mass transportation requires large investments. So therefore, in co cooperation with the European Commission, we developed two financial instruments that specifically target the decarbonisation of transport and mobility. These being the cleaner transport facility on the left and the future mobility facility on the right. And just to be clear, the, these facilities are mainly targeted at helping SMEs access finance for innovative green, clean tech projects. Um, and then through these facilities, we have so far been able to finance projects such as EV charging stations and networks, uh, refueling facilities and deployment of electric shuttles and green shipping, etc. And we'll share some examples with you later on, but just a, a, an idea of um, what these facilities have helped us to achieve so far. Now, in terms of the cleaner transport facility, this focuses on funding projects that deploy alternative fuels, and such fuels can include electric, hydrogen, biofuels, and such. And you'll see here that, uh, you know, an example of the indicative terms. Now, of course, terms are more so transaction specific, but just to provide a high level overview of, of what is available, um, the funding instruments are generally loans, guarantees, or quasi-equity. The loans can also be subordinated, 
Um, guarantees can be provided, but of course, it's all subject to the transaction dynamics and specifics and, and credit metrics. Um, and quasi equity, essentially, that we call it in house venture debt, but we'll, we'll get onto that in a slide later on. Um, in terms of the loan size, EIV minimum lending is seven and a half million. Now, typically, we prefer loans, offering loans greater than 25 million. So, to give you an idea specifically here, our minimum is seven and a half million, and ordinarily, EIB funds up to 50% of total of eligible project cost. So therefore, one would expect the project minimum to be around 15 million in order for us to provide a minimum of seven and a half million. So not on the small side, but small for us, let's say. Um, now in terms of what the funding will actually cover, so the eligible costs, um, we look to cover the infrastructure and the assets, so vehicles, um, whatever tangible assets really need to, to, to be bought or developed by the promoter. Um, we also fund the project preparation and implementation costs. Now, with regards to the future mobility facility, this is targeted at new mobility startups at growth stage. And it targets projects in the transport sector that are looking to deploy innovative technologies. And it also aims to mobilize private sector investments um, within this clean, digital, and automated space. Um, and should you wish, of course, Ozan can go into more detail about the types of technology a bit later on. But again, just to give you an idea of the funding available, um, you know, the, the projects um, involve the construct, must involve the construction of new assets or the improvement of existing ones. Um, and it supports essentially the deployment of projects that reduce carbon emissions um, or increase energy efficiency and or boost technological innovation. Similar indicative terms to the clean transport facility uh, in terms of the instruments and uh, the loan size available. And the eligibility there seems a bit more stricter with regards to focus on clean mobility, digital mobility solutions, automated and telecoms and energy. Now, in terms of the financing offered, um, in, if you're a project promoter, you may be wondering what the benefits of either of these lending facilities could be to you in your daily life. Well, uh, the benefits of achieving financing under either of them include the following, really. Uh, first of all, if you have a high-risk project that has a viable business model, then these are for you, because we found that most commercial banks are somewhat... Uh, reticent to, to finance first-of-a-kind projects or, or generally speaking products or services that don't yet have an established market. So therefore through our rigorous appraisal process we aim to select the most purposeful and, and viable projects. Now through our funding we aim to bring a level of comfort and commitment to the markets to encourage the crowding in of private sector lenders and investors. So as mentioned earlier EIB funds up to 50% of eligible project costs. So as such, it's up to the promoter to determine how they wish to fund the remaining 50%, whether through equity, whether through grants, whether through uh, debt from external sources or a combination of the alternatives. So both the uh, cleaner transport facility and the future mobility facility offer long tenants as well, up to 15 years, alongside competitive pricing. And of course, I can't go into detail on the exact pricing as each is transaction specific. However, as mentioned earlier, yeah, the objective is always to offer as low financing costs as, as possible. Another benefit uh, to promoters really is that both facilities allow for blending of the financing and they also offer advisory services support. Now, Blending is a combination, is allowing the promoter really a combination of debt and or equity with grants. For example, the future mobility facility itself is a, a thematic financing instrument under the European Commission's uh, CEF debt instrument. And it allows for individual projects to combine funding from, say, uh, an EU, national or, or regional grant alongside, say, a loan from EIB and or equity as well. So therefore gives you the flexibility 
to fund your project as wholly and holistically as possible in order to, to get it off the ground and achieve um, the growth dyma dynamics that you require. Now, last of all, I, I think that achieving funding under either of the facilities provides quite a good quality stamp, and it does provide a positive signal effect to the markets. Uh, basically, if your project is good enough to, say, achieve funding under European Commission or EIB financing solution, then it's essentially saying to lenders and investors that this is an attractive project, um, that and it's giving the sign that the project has been thoroughly vetted, the project will likely work, and you, you must know what you're doing, basically, as a promoter. Uh, but of all, above all, of course, we expect other lenders and investors to do their own due diligence and not rely on ours. However, it's commonly understood that EIB's processes are rather rigorous. Now, in terms of the financing for growth companies, because as mentioned earlier, both facilities largely are for the benefits of SMEs. Now, the financing offered under the, both the Clean and Transport Facility and the Future Mobility Facility come in the form of loans. And these include subordinated loans, quasi-equity and guarantees. Now, quasi-equity, or venture debt as we prefer to call it, is an equity-like instrument for young, innovative companies that are directly available here at the EIB to support you with. So just working through the slides, to give you an idea of who venture debt would be appealing to, you imagine this, we imagine that you'd be an innovative, driven company with growth um, and a lot of intellectual property. We, you'd imagine that you're also a startup or mid-cap with less than 3,000 employees and growing. Most of our projects really are from companies with, say, you know, up to three people to 300 people, um, not so many with the 3,000 part, but all are welcome that fall within the bucket. Um, we also expect you to have already raised some Series B or C equity. So therefore, you're at the growth and developmental stage. So essentially looking to go up one step um, and sort of boost your project to either deployment or com commercialization stage. Huh? Uh, we also look for promoters that are strong and have sustainable business models with professional management team so that you've considered where you are, you know, where you've been as, as a company, where you are and where you want to go, that your management team have experience in what they're doing. You know, they have past experience, uh, maybe from industry, um, but together as a team, you're solid in the sense that you know this market, you know this product, you know what you're doing. Because ultimately, I mean, EIB, you know, we are an investment bank. We're not looking to come and run your project for you. So we need to have faith in that the management team are strong in, in what they're doing. And with regards to the venture debt and with it being offered to SMEs and mid caps, um, I think it's important to... Uh, to, to highlight the fact that often the financing structure includes uh, a lot of flexibility here. So it's not, say, the normal EIB type loan or say, not just EIB, the normal vanilla type loan where you have a loan, you have certain repayment periods, um, you know, you, and the fixed amounts that you are to pay back or floating. With venture debt, the financing structure um, can include bullet repayments, it can include remuneration linked to equity, it can include, um, generally it's, it's bespoke financing. So loans can be secured or unsecured. And uh, there's different levels of subordination, including contingent or participating. Um, what's key to, to put across to a lot of, say, startups and SMEs, because we find that um, Promoters, you, know, you spend a lot of time, a lot of years, a lot of sweat into getting their company and their products up to a certain level. And then they hear venture debt that it's quasi equity. You know, the equity word kind of you know, freaks people out, freaks people out a little bit, thinking that you know, EIB is coming to you know, take over the equity of your company. But we are actually non dilutive. Huh? We don't look to get involved with the day-to-day -day activities or any of those purposes 
it's merely more of a, a protection purpose for us. But more than likely, I mean, we just sort of have a very hands-off approach. We, the EIB assumes no direct involvement in the daily management. All right, um, moving on to some technical assistance. Now, to support promoters in getting the projects up to, say, the technical standards required for EIB and for EU funding in general, and also for you know, being worthy of financing from third parties, we offer technical assistance and advisory services. Now, technical assistance can be offered through ELENA, which stands for European Local Energy Assistance. Um, and it's a grant scheme offered by the European Commission through which EIB itself provides technical support to projects focused on developing either energy efficiency, sustainable residential buildings, or urban transport and mobility. Now, the benefit of technical assistance from Eleanor is to encourage and support the aggregation of different projects, so as to essentially increase the attractiveness for contractors and financiers. And typically, Eleanor supports investment programs or projects of more than 30 million euros and such. And ideally, there should be a three or four year implementation period for them. Now, the grant can be used to finance costs related to, as we've listed here, just a few, feasibility and market studies, um, business plans, program structuring, audits and financial structuring, uh, you know, preparation of tendering procedures, etc. And um, of course, you know, if you have more to find questions on this, then um, this would be sort of Ozan's remit. I'm sure he can elaborate further there. But as always, there are further details available on our website. In terms of the advisory services offered, um, this is the, the side that I work on. And really, projects can benefit from financial advice from our team, the Innovation Finance Advisory Team here at EIB. Uh, more specifically within that, the project advisory unit. And so within the project advisory side of our team, we look to support promoters in developing um, their projects to the point that essentially they can have a, a good and functioning and working investment memorandum that can be used to, act, you know, used to try and access other financing or other investing, but equally that we can pass on to the EIB lending team and help you towards achieving and accessing finance from EIB. Um, ordinarily, we work with promoters to develop the project pipeline. Uh, we review the projects to identify gaps or weaknesses uh, in business plans or strategy and development, etc., and, and try to advise on improvements. Um, we also advise on other business areas such as uh, RDI plans and such. But the bread and butter of our work is identifying optimal financing solutions for projects um, that enable them to then achieve the maximum access to finance, both within and outside the EIB group. Of course, if you, can, if you would like to take EIB finance, we're more than happy to help you and assist you with that. But there is no um, requirement for you to take EIB financing if you come through advisory services, of course. Now, on the back of this, we, we look to create contacts between promoters um, in-house and also using our wide network um, amongst the market. So often we try to connect promoters, you know, so let's say they are looking for some equity funding, we will try and connect them with uh, promoters, uh, uh, sorry, investors or equity houses in our wide database you know, look at the ones that we be more specific to the activities of the promoter and then try and foster some relationships and hopefully uh, the promoter will be in a position to obtain equity funding if attractive to the relevant equity houses. Um, ultimately, our aim, though, is to provide financial advisory. So we provide the advice. Should you wish to take it, excellent. If you don't wish to take it, excellent also, but it's also in everybody's benefit for the advice obviously to be taken and uh, the, the growth plans to be achieved. Um, 
I think uh, I should highlight that one of our main focuses or ultimate fo focuses is to help promoters achieve strategic development of their projects. Um, and, and that includes market development and, act and the actual project development itself. So it's not just purely the financial, but it's the financial size with respect to driving those elements of the project. But notable of all, uh, I think I should highlight that financial advisory provided is free. So, um, you know, if we find your project interesting, if we're looking to work with you and develop it um, so that you can get to a point that you can access the requisite funding, you can relax in the fact that we will not be sending you an invoice for our services at the end. The work is completely free. Um, and now just, I guess, to give you an idea of what we have or are doing, um, I'll pass over to my colleague, Ozan, who will share some examples with you. So uh, thank you, thank thank you very much, Juliet, uh, for for the presentation. <clears throat> so as Juliet said, in fact, in this part of the presentation, uh, we will uh, give you some examples, example cases, <laughs> where uh, uh, sorry sorry for my voice, uh, where feature mobility, especially feature mobility, has been used. Uh, one example, uh, the first example is a software as a service. Uh, so this is this is uh, this is a, again a scaling up a solution, a software as a service solution, uh, and the EIB financing uh, is targeted to, to to support the scaling up of this platform. Uh, in this case, uh, the project is about um, an intermediary company, uh, so it is it is the project is about uh, financing of this intermediary company's investment uh, on their digital platform, uh, and then this digital platform, in fact, is intended to use a connected uh, different partners uh, in the mobility market. Uh, so it is about connecting uh, the, the the demand side with the supply side uh, with an innovative way uh, so in uh, first of all the project has as, as uh, Juliet said in fact uh, the EIB financing uh, is important for for projects especially for for growth companies uh, but at the same time uh, EIB is also looking at project how these projects are contributing uh, to welfare of the society uh, in other words, uh, how the so how the project is beneficial to the whole society. Uh, so uh, we are also looking at from this perspective the projects uh, and uh, what we can say about this project. It is uh, a platform. It's a digital platform, uh, which is also a priority uh, in future mobility. Uh, it is about complementing the the, the transit uh, backbone uh, of of cities. And this is also one important part, so complementary to the public transport, uh, and also it is supporting the first mile and last mile options, which are uh, which may be missing uh, in in many cities, and which is a really uh, important problem of the urban mobility. Uh, and also, this project is also supporting in an indirect way uh, reducing private car ownership because uh, because uh, it is providing transport options uh, complementary to public transport and also uh, connecting the dots between uh, missing links uh, it is it, it is contributing to reducing private car ownership and also private car use so in this in this perspective uh, we are expecting this project will also uh, contribute to the reducing traffic congestion and also the emissions so this is uh, we, we don't disclose the names of this project uh, but uh, we can say uh, advisory uh, services has supported uh, in uh, in project development phase uh, and now it is uh, under EIB project appraisal for financing uh, another example uh, we can give this project as a mobility as a service example a mass example uh, again, it is an IT platform, a digital platform. Uh, this platform is supporting uh, the shared and electric mobility services, uh, notably car sharing, EV car sharing in different uh, countries and cities in the European, uh, European Union. Uh, uh, this, uh, this, this project has received an EIB financing and what we have 
uh, we have also uh, explored how this project contributes to the society uh, and basically uh, the project is an enabler a facilitator for EV shared mobility uh, therefore the project is contributing uh, to decarbonization in transport uh, and also it is uh, it is also improving air quality in cities uh, which is a re real severe problem in major cities uh, especially in major cities uh, and also the project is uh, as said before it is facilitating ev car sharing uh, business uh, and then uh, in this way uh, the, the project also contributes to improving electric mobility supply uh, by enabling uh, these uh, EV transport options to the users this is indirectly supporting uh, EV uh, industry so this is also uh, uh, in the growing stage and which is which is also very positive uh, as an uh, indirect benefit of this project so uh, another example uh, this is in fact we are we have tried to to uh, list uh, different cases uh, uh, for 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 different uh, fields uh, and this example is from uh, uh, autonomous driving uh, again we don't disclose the name of the project this is under uh, also eib financing appraisal stage so this hasn't received any eib financing yet uh, but it is about uh, again a scaling up uh, of the technology uh, and to deploy uh, autonomous vehicles uh, in in the european union countries uh, advisory services has uh, has supported this project uh, also in the early stages in the project development uh, and uh, they have guided uh, the, the 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 project uh, about about uh, their business plan, uh, the financial structuring, etc. Uh, and then uh, this is handed over to the uh, EIB financing services. Uh, and this project is now currently assessed uh, by the EIB uh, for EIB financing. Uh, so, in fact, uh, these three examples are mainly the digital uh, or automation automated technologies uh, in fact the first two cases so software as a service and mobile as a service basically they were um, um, digital mobility platforms uh, enabling uh, electric vehicle mobility and also uh, enabling uh, providing uh, transport different transport options to the users uh, the third case was uh, automated uh, transport case uh, and uh, feature mobility is also supporting clean technology uh, in fact to be more specific here uh, electric and hydrogen in fact it, they, they, they are the priority technologies currently uh, and this, these are the technologies also in line with the bank's uh, climate bank roadmap uh, which has been uh, published uh, almost six months ago uh and uh, in fact uh, i would uh, i would also suggest you will have a look at the, the climate bank roadmap of uh, eib uh, which technologies are eligible for eib financing so this will give you a good uh, some some good information about the eib eligibilities in terms of uh, clean transport which is a very fast evolving field and also uh, in fact uh, the eligibilities are also changing quite fast uh, at this stage uh, so uh, i suggest you will have a look at the climate bank roadmap of eib which is online and available on the eib website uh, so this project is about the hydrogen fuel cell electric buses uh, and uh, it is about uh, retrofitting an entire fleet of diesel buses uh, with the uh, hydrogen technology uh, so it is about uh, deploying a hydrogen fuel cell electric buses uh, as as uh, is similar to the other cases uh, advisory services because these are new projects these are innovative projects market is not 
uh, a mature market. So there is a substantial market risk, and also it is needed to, to establish a business case for these projects. So of course, uh, advisory services has provided a great value added in project development of these projects. Uh, and then after providing several uh, advisory services to this project, uh, and uh, now it is uh, transferred to the EIB lending team for, for, for appraisal. Uh, in fact, basically these were uh, the, the four cases from different uh, fields, uh, software as a service, mobility as a service, uh, autonomous driving uh, and hydrogen uh, technology in transport. Uh, maybe ju just as, as a single sentence about uh, to summarize uh, about future mobility. Uh, yes, uh, to be eligible for future mobility uh, facility, uh, there should be a scale up. Uh, so as uh, Juliet said, uh, there is a minimum 7.5 million EIB landing, which, which means that uh, 15 million, at least a 15 million investment, there should be an investment, which can be asset. Uh, transport assets like vehicles or charging stations or refueling stations, hydrogen refueling stations, uh, or uh, when the project is about a digital platform, uh, the, the software development, IT development uh, can be also an eligible uh, investment uh, for, for these projects. Uh, but there should be minimum 15 million investment, which makes uh, these projects are really a scaling up projects. Uh, so, uh, in fact, these these were uh, the example cases. I, I hope these gave you a good understanding of which types of projects are, in fact, uh, financed by uh, a future mobility facility or, in general, EIB financing. Uh, and here you see the contact details of uh, Juliet and uh, me, myself, uh, and then uh, also we will try to answer your questions, I think, in the, in the question and answer session. Uh, but uh, if you have further questions or if we are not able to answer your questions, so difficult questions, so we will, uh, of course, uh, revert back to you with the answers. Uh, and uh, this is all from my side. Thank you. Do you want to add anything, Juliet? No, no, thank you very much. I think we've covered uh, our points and hopefully we've been clear. Um, and yeah, we look forward to your questions. Excellent. So thank you very much to you both for this interesting presentation. Uh, several questions have come up in the chat. Uh, for those of you who, have, who still have questions, uh, please notice that now we will go into the Q&A session. So all questions, you can just uh, publish them here directly, either on the public chat or as a private message uh, directly to me, and then I'll make sure to, to bring them up. Uh, so I have here uh, been gathering the different questions that have come up. So uh, the first question is, who bears the financial risk if a project fails? Does EIB provide respective guarantees? Um, on some projects, yes, we do provide guarantees, but of course, this is transaction specific. Now, if we're st talking about, say, a startup that doesn't really have any assets or any performance, then no, I mean, ultimately, we're not likely to give guarantees or such. Um, but there is the opportunity for larger projects to um, obtain guarantees. So it is all, as I say, very transaction specific. and. One thing that EIB is good at doing is looking on a case by case basis. So we like to see the whole picture of a project and make a decision. So it's not to say that you can have two very similar projects and they will have the same financing. Um, you know, we really like to look at all the dynamics within each individual project and craft or sculpture the financing around it. So Yes, there is a possibility of guarantees, but it's subject to the type of transaction. Okay, thank you. The next question is, with this disrupting link between transport and di digital consumption, is there a focus in the portfolio for projects aiming at the link between conventional commerce transformation and urban freight? 
Uh, and then he mentions working, for instance, with home uh, wholesalers at large public logistics platforms, such as Rungis, Merca Madrid, or the like. Um, we haven't done so much, well, to my knowledge, we haven't done so much work with regards to you know, distribution networks and such. But um, I don't think that's necessarily something that's off limits. Um, I think it's all subject to what is eligible under the terms of the future mobility facility of, or the cleaner transport facility. Now, one has to identify the actual project itself. What is the investment? What are you looking for EIB to invest in? I mean, if you have a project and you have um, you know, movers and shakers in the industry that come together as say, you know, uh, a project team, and you have a specific project, then yes, we can definitely look at that. Our doors are always open to you know, look at interesting projects, but it's up to promoters to bring the projects to us and because you know ultimately we are a bank. So you know we're happy to finance what's out there, but it needs to be interesting, it needs to be bankable, um, therefore meaning that it's technically feasible, economically viable. Um, now, I don't think necessarily, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Ozan, but the two facilities that we talked of, the cleaner facility, cleaner um, transport facility and the future mobility facility, they are more exactly focused on improving sustainable transport and mobility. However, if you wish to talk about venture debt to fund the project specifically outside of those two facilities, that could be an option. If you look to fund a, a, a project focused on uh, obtaining an EIB loan, that could be a separate discussion. But under those two facilities themselves, I don't think there's a specific dynamic to look at distribution chains um, and networks. It's more transport chains and networks. But correct me if I'm wrong, Ozan. I mean, he's... No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Of course, these uh, these facilities, the cleaner transport facility or future novelty facilities, they have their own mandates, uh, of course. Uh, but... Uh, at the same time, uh, of course, EIB financing is a really a broader uh, picture, uh, and uh, EIB f f f finances uh, several different types of projects. Of course, under the, the EIB eligibilities. Uh, so, in general, we can say EIB financing uh, now is targeted on the, the sustainable uh, transport solutions. Uh, regardless of uh, cleaner transport facility or future mobility facility, uh, we we would like to see how the project demonstrates a clear uh, benefit uh, to society in terms of reducing environmental externalities uh, or, or other externalities. Um, um, I will I will open another uh, uh, discussion here, uh, Juliet. Uh, maybe we can also have a small uh, chat about the, the Elena uh, maybe here because this this urban freight delivery is also something uh, an eligible field for uh, Elena uh, in fact as Juliet mentioned uh, there is another advisory uh, service uh, that EIB uh, provides uh, on behalf of the Commission uh, this is Elena uh, and the Elena has also a transport angle so basically it has uh, three pillars residential buildings uh, energy uh, sustainable energy and uh, transport uh, and transport only urban transport urban mobility uh, and in this context uh, uh, innovative transport projects which can be alternative fuel projects notably hydrogen and electric uh, infrastructure and assets uh, and also uh, the solutions, innovative solutions, uh, for example, enabling urban freight delivery uh, in a cleaner way. Uh, so, uh, as said before, the project should demonstrate a clear benefit to reducing CO2 emissions, NOx emissions, uh, and model shift if possible. Uh, so, uh, a project specifically targeting uh, providing a urban freight delivery solution uh, uh, answering the, the last mile, the first mile, last mile uh, problems uh, could be eligible for ELENA uh, project development grant. So ELENA is not an investment grant, so it is a project development grant, so it can finance up to 90% of the project development activities. 
the, the details are also uh, mentioned uh, by Juliet uh, on, on the slides. Uh, so that, 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 that's one point. So uh, Elena can be also eligible for urban freight solutions, which are sustainable. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Uh, so the next question is, if a, a 7.5 million minimum loan, meaning 15 million project cost in total, would it rather be supported by the EIF instrument? Well, EIF doesn't support necessarily individual projects as such. Um, they tend to provide equity on a more portfolio basis. Um, for small projects, I mean, the reality is that you need to start with sufficient equity. And so, therefore, you'd be looking at VCs um, in such equity houses to, to help finance that. Um, and maybe if you've got to the point that you're sort of beyond startup and you scale up, then that's where EIB could come in with regards to sort of the venture debt, um, the quasi-equity um, instruments that we offer. But for anything smaller than sort of the seven and a half million, even in terms of equity, um, I mean, EIF wouldn't um, necessarily be an option there. However, um, you know, we do do intermediated loans and such, whereby we EIB provides loans through intermediaries and they then on lend that could be a potential option for smaller scale projects um again not necessarily getting equity there but getting funding in terms of, of loans from an intermediary um so there are options like that um but in terms of direct equity investment for anything smaller than, than seven and a half um it, it's not really eib groups remit to do that Okay. Next question is, does the EIB invest alone in quasi-equity or do you require other investors on FMM? FMF, sorry. FMF is there for only for scale-ups, not applicable to startups. Okay, yes. So, yes, really the, it is for um, scale-ups. I mean, to get an understanding of quasi, the quasi-equity or the, the, the venture debt, product um one must uh, understand that you know startups it depends also on what kind of startup you are huh? some startups come with buckets of money uh, and some startups come with an empty bucket um you know startup is more at the position you are on the growth curve let's say um but in terms of the venture debt facility it requires uh, part of the eligibility requirements are a minimum of three years of performance so a minimum three years of say counts. So therefore, you need to be show to show that you have been making some money um, or been active in the market for a minimum of three continuous years. Um, now, in terms of you know, other opportunities for for lending, that you know, this is why we set a minimum of the seven and a half. Although it's not there for let's say the the classic startup. Uh, you know, the, the guy in the garage that's come with a good product and you know, he's managed to get some funding along the way. You know, we, we do aim for the larger um, of the, the, the startup world, let's say, um, which I guess relative to most of our clients, we consider startups, but in reality, they're really scale ups. Um, they're looking to move to commercialization, um, growth state, basically. Okay, perfect. Uh, the next question is, any support for Series A seed financing or fostering the inclusion of early stage startups in large consortia to meet minimum size criteria? No, that's not something that we actively do, though of course we do have a network of um, you know, VCs, accelerators, um, you know, and, and, and potential investors on our database that we can help connect uh, promoters with. But I mean, if you're at the seed stage, uh, you know, really, you're not really at the bankable stage. And that's where these facilities and the EIB activity really comes into developing 
Um, you know, we, we like to go a bit beyond that. As mentioned in the slides, we're more sort of looking at the companies that are have done a series B raise, potentially a series C raise. So, you know, seed, appreciate, we appreciate it's very difficult. Um, you know, everyone has to start somewhere. And unfortunately, it's not something that EIB can ordinarily assist with. But having said that, when you get to the point that you have achieved uh, Series A and Series B, and potentially Series C, our doors are wide open, and uh, we're all ears to listen to, <laughs> to what your project could offer. Perfect. Uh, next question. For finance advisory, is there a minimum project size, minimum cost, to have access for this. I think I heard, I heard this, uh, it's not the case, but this is just to confirm. No, I mean, there's no um, minimum, essentially. Um, you know, we don't say, oh, okay, you, know, you, you need to have uh, you know, seven and a half million minimum uh, or 15 million minimum eligible costs. However, you know, we, we can give you advisory, but the point of the matter is, you know, we are a bank at the end of the day, so there is some funding, hopefully, to be achieved from providing the advisory. There is some opportunity for you to achieve funding in the markets, um, either without EIB or with EIB. So therefore, we don't have a minimum requirement in terms of the advisory, but we expect the project to be at a certain a certain stage, whether you're pre-bankable and we can help you bridge that, um, you know, cross the bridge in terms of being bankable, um, you know, that's where we step in. But we're not here to, you know, we, we just don't have the resources and capacity necessary to sort of hold uh, the hands of promoters that are at the seed stage or, you know, below Series B or Series C. Um, so ideally, it's best to come forwards and achieve advisory or obtain advisory services when you can say yes you know i have you know a 15 million upwards project eib could you please help me um, with advisory services so that you know we can help you develop your business plan we can help you develop your strategy coordination um, and development if you need uh, assistance in terms of raising equity we can therefore then uh, look at helping you with uh, equity pitch materials and such connect you where possible with uh, you know our relevant industry contacts etc um, so these services are available we don't put a minimum on the project though we do expect it to be at a stage that it could actually be bankable for EIB itself and commercially too Okay, so the next question, taking it in parts, uh, because there have been an exchange of messages in this regard. Uh, the question is, what about finance related to projects for decarbonization of shipping industry? So commercial vessels specifically, which are uh, regularly calling EU ports. So here what they are talking about is that it could be very interesting to know about the investment possibility into the asset itself, not just the infrastructure, like, for example, a new engine, and also uh, not only looking into the fleet, but also the associated processes such as ship cleaning, degassing, and so on. I guess that's what's on. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a specific question about shipping, but yes, in in principle, uh, yes, EIB finances also the shipping projects, so so the, the the vessels itself, but also of course they should be uh, fall into the EIB eligibility. Uh, so and also if the project is uh, including innovation in its uh, itself, so uh, uh, future mobility also can be an uh, option. Uh, but uh, I'd really uh, suggest, in fact, uh, to have a look at the climate bank roadmap uh, of EIB to, to see the eligibilities of, of, the, of the sector. Shipping uh, industry and also in maritime uh, transport in general, uh, in fact, it is, uh, there are currently discussions about the decarbonization of shipping industry and also maritime transport. Uh, but in principle, yes, uh, projects shipping projects or maritime transport projects in general uh, eib uh, financing is available uh, the, for the projects uh, for uh, for the eligible projects for eib financing perfect 
so uh, in relation in relation to digital solution scale ups, can you give some more details about the minimum required numbers in terms of EBITDA, number of clients, uh, total market size, and so on? Um, uh, for, for, in fact, I assume this is, is for EIB financing. Uh, there is no requirement for EBITDA or markets, but I, again, so the, the main uh, indicator for us uh, to qualify for EIB financing, first of all, the eligibility. So this is... Uh, this is the number one uh, thing we are looking at. Uh, the other is uh, the minimum investment size, so 15 million. Uh, there should be 15 million eligible investment cost for EIB. Uh, this can change, uh, this 15 million, uh, of course, uh, requires different, diff different project components in different projects. So for, for, for example, for an, uh, asset intensive projects this 50 million will be very easy to reach uh, for example if you if you want to finance uh, 30 hydrogen buses so you can easily reach this 50 million investment but on the other hand if you if you are doing a digital platform as in the question uh, 15 million uh, uh, in for example uh, in three years uh, as investment uh, could be difficult uh, so, to, as an answer to your question, there is no EBITDA requirement or market or or, or, or client minimum. Uh, we are what we are looking at really the, the investment components that could be eligible for EIB financing. Uh, these also are also including the, the the platform development for deployment purpose. Uh, if uh, yes, if he can find this 15 million, then, then the project can be eligible for EIB financing. Perfect. Uh, and just so you all know, I have put here in the chat uh, directly the link in order to download the EIB Group Climate Bank Roadmap. Uh, so you have direct access to it yep. there. Um, so next question. It seems that the first go, go to would be to connect with Innofin advisory to get a clear landscape of what is suitable to finance research and innovation projects that are within the scope. So I believe this is the request a confirmation of this. Yeah, um, you know, if you if you're a promoter and you think ha have an interesting project, then you would be interested in exploring um, EIP financing. Absolutely, reach out to advisory first. I mean, we can discuss the dynamics of your project with you. Um, and give you an overview of well, potential uh, viability and um, you know, the, the eligibility within, uh, you know, for the purposes of EIB products. Um, and also we can talk to you, of course, of how to develop um, the packaging of the product better and the credit stories essentially help you with the credit narrative that not only benefits an application for EIB lending, but also for external financing. So yeah, definitely reach out to us. Um, we'll take a look. Um, in, in any case, we will get back to you to say yes or no. I mean, if this is something that we could work with or we could help you develop or not. Um, but ultimately, we'd like always, always like to give some recommendations anyway. So even if a project doesn't quite work um, with what EIB has to offer, we're happy to suggest um, you know, other potential routes using uh, the knowledge base. Excellent. Uh, so the next question is regard to a disruptive uh, European mobility project. So it's a project of eight years uh, entry in the market with a very high return on investment. Uh, it is confirmed to fulfill and anticipate uh, the strategic EU Commission objectives, especially those related to the European Green Deal and the European uh, Clean Hydrogen Alliance. So the question is, can EIB guarantee and manage to find at least one financing bank invest implementing partner available to finance the project for earlier entry in the market? Um. I'm just trying to, is it saying, can EIB guarantee? Yes, can EIB guarantee and manage to find at least one financing bank? I know, I mean, we're not we're not going to guarantee you that we will find you a financing bank. I mean, at the end of the day, we will support you, but it's up to the promoter to do the work, to do the discussions, to go out there, 
to you know network and communicate and 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 uh, you know, get the requisite financing because ultimately EIB can only finance up to fifty percent and we're not necessarily here to um, dictate to other banks and pull them into projects. It's their decision to make, just as we've made ours. Um, I talked earlier about the signaling effect that EIB lending or EIB interest in a project tends to provide. In that, you know, if an EIB is in a project, a lot of private sector um, investors and lenders are, you know, it, it provides a sense of comfort to them. Um, but we are never going to, you know, say to any lender or investor, even those that we work closely with and say, okay, we have this project, please take it. So we can definitely not guarantee you, but we can obviously provide you the links and the network to go out there and have discussions with external parties. Thank you very much. So uh, one of the final questions, to what extent does the EU taxonomy um, slash EIB uh, eligibility criteria not allowed to finance vessels with an LGN fueled propulsion. That would be for you, yeah. Arthur. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is, um, uh, yes, uh, I, I'm not a maritime expert, so I have also asked my colleague uh, to, to answer that question, but this is something really in discussion. So this is a really hot topic. I would like to avoid answering this question <laughs> now, uh, but of course later I will I will come back to that. So this is a very sensitive topic. So what I can say, uh, and I will we will revert back to you to provide an answer. Pending pending on answers. Uh, so it's, uh, there is a question here that asked me if I can share the email contacts of the panelists here in the chat or by email. Uh, would you agree that I indicate uh, your contact data directly here in the chat? Oh, yeah, uh, and we will we'll of yeah. course also make them available uh, afterwards once we we publish. Mm -hmm. uh, so as as we I have indicated in the beginning, uh, this webinar has been recorded and it will be made public. Uh, we would need a couple of more weeks in order to get the approval in also in order to also uh, publish the PowerPoint presentation as such as uh, of, of EIB. Uh, but once we have uh, those formalities in order, we will also make sure to publish it on our website and make that available. So yes, I will make sure just to send to you right here, the contact data, just one second. Um, and meanwhile, I'm going to take advantage and uh, and especially you, Juliet and Offman, thank you very much for all of your uh, great help and uh, a very interesting webinar. Um, if anybody else have any further questions, this would be the perfect opportunity to to speak uh, to Offman and, and Juliet. And otherwise, I have just copied to you here their email addresses so you could uh, request some more information from them. And uh, I imagine also in regard to this last question, uh, Othman, um, that is a bit more sensitive and a bit more difficult. Uh, maybe they will get directly in contact with you. So if there are no further questions, all there's left is to Thank everybody for attending. Uh, thank you, Juliet and Afman, for participating. And uh, in case you have any regards uh, or any questions in regard to the entrance project or uh, to the entrance matchmaking platform, please do not hesitate to, to enter uh, the website of the entrance project. I will also make sure to put that here now. Um, and there you also have directly our contact uh, data. Um, the webinar will be directly uh, published on the website and also on the entrance platform. So there you, I have just put the link uh, here in the chat so you can see it at another time. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, we will finish the session of today. Great. Right. Thanks for having us. Much appreciated. I hope it's been useful to all. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Without any doubt. Without any doubt. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.